Hello. So we're going to officially start step four with this, uh, but we're going to talk more about step three because I just cannot seem to leave that step alone. Um, but we'll just keep going on here a little bit and uh, hopefully this provides some information for uh, you guys, regardless of whether you want to accurize this or not. It's just kind of the, what would I say, the key step going forward with the uh, with the kit. It feels like once I get past this, the rest of it's just going to be all downhill. Because um, at this point, you're making all the big decisions on how you want this to uh, go forward. Such as open or closed hatches, doors what's going to be seen, side skirts, all this kind of stuff. So it kind of makes sense that it's tough to uh, get through. But on the other hand, if you were just building this kit, you could just burn through this particular step of two, three, and four, probably in 20 minutes. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping that this gives you kind of an, a, an help on making those decisions so you can build this a lot quicker than I have been. That said, what I'm going to do is add the uh, shocks that were missing from the kit. Pretty simple little parts, just adding them with uh, a little bit of uh, the black glue. There are three of them at the front and one of them in the rear. They go roughly in the middle of the um, Roughly in the middle of the arm. The first arm here that you can see is at a slightly different angle, so it's going to be a little bit different. I'm just using what I made up as my generally generalized, generally uh, produced shocks. If you are really concerned about the exact angle, I would say consult references. There are a number of them out there. What I'm doing is trying to put them just a little bit above or in line with this uh, last return roller that I, I have already placed on there. That's where I'm going with it. And the important thing is, is that there's kind of a half curve to the pieces for the bracing. That half curve goes over the top, so basically out of the way. So when you get the parts, they are handed left and right, or if you get parts, or you, you know, even if you make your own parts, they are landed or handed. So that first one isn't exactly what I would call uh, perfectly aligned down here because of how I set it up above, but the rest of these fall in pretty nicely. And then it's just a matter of working with the glue like so and like so now I'm going to be putting on the return rollers and I know this and I also know that these are fairly close so that shows that it's pretty much in the right spot and finally the one at the back end now the one here in the back is probably the most visible but I'm not I'm not too worried either way just get it on call it good and move on yeah I kind of over added on this edge right here not where I was really going, but this is how I, I'm going to work. I think that looks okay with, with a little bit of paint on it. It shouldn't look bad at all. And <laughs> in the usual run of how armor bottlers work, you can also sit there and just say, oh, that, that's just dirt. Hoorah. <laughs> Seems like a big cheat, probably is. Not really too worried about it myself. Do I am getting, I am getting a bit of a chuckle out of it. So that all said, 
I have printed up more than enough return rollers so that I have all the pieces that I need. I'm just pulling them out from the side here where I had them stored. There we go. I only need two. I've got four for the, the large center ones that are out. I'm not too worried about it other than just gluing it on and this I can do by by hand I don't want to get too much in there and these things they're big enough to where they might globulize so I'm doing that and then just kind of plunk it on should go right above the fourth road wheel station and you just gotta check from the side to make sure that it's on straight, not too not wobbled in any way, and that kind of that kind of covers it. It should be just a little bit higher than this one in the rear, because this will be higher, higher, and then this one's a little bit down. Now for the other return roller right here. Yeah, be careful they launch. Just check and make sure everything's as clean as I want it to be. It looks good to me. Now I'm gonna uh, work this a little bit so that it looks nicer. And of course, I don't know where I put my file. Why would I have any sort of knowledge on where I'd keep my file? That makes no sense at all. So I'm not gonna work this anymore. Anyways, where I have the have had this uh, attached when I printed it, there is a little bit of roughness. Um, I could use a knife to trim that down, but what I found is that this resin is a little bit brittle, and therefore I don't want to necessarily have little chips in it. So I like sanding it down. However, since I can't find my metal sanding stick because apparently I'm lazy or disorganized. <laughs> Actually, I know where it is. I just don't know where I put the, oh, yeah, it's in the box right there. Uh -huh. I'm just lazy and it's not really a, that big a deal. I just trim down that edge. Now, what I do like doing is grabbing it by the two little air holes, the little uh, lightning holes there is the pad and I'll show you with the glue it isn't really big just like on the real thing it's only that much of it and then it goes right in there and like I said if you are worried about complete accuracy and you might be I mean I'm, that's not a it's not a dig at all because I'm already worried about how well all this looks. So, but I don't have my reference up for placing all of this. All I know is that that is going to look very accurate the way that it is. I'll take these wheels right now and show you how this will all come out. Like so. So I put all the wheels on. You can see that they all they all have the poly caps in them. None of these are glued, but they all line up. They work really well. Here is the um, idler that I have. I have not glued this together, but I can. It just spins. It's it just slides right on. I haven't really cleaned this up as nice as I want it to, but the point is. It's much more accurate in shape, not 100%. I know what the problem is, but I'm really tired of dealing with this. I don't want to deal with it. It, it basically just doesn't cave in like it should. Ever, all the details are accurate. Otherwise, I think it looks fine the way it is. I'm going to practice the art of good enough. And it goes, because this is the Tamiya setup, there are already some inaccuracies and shortcuts that have taken place just to make this work. So, slides right on. Once this is glued, it won't move around. 
slides right on like that. The nice thing is, is that you look down along there and once this is glued down, everything lines up perfectly. You can take the tracks right out of the kit right now, put them on, glue them on, glue the, you know, use the cement to glue them together. That'd work. There's no problem with that whatsoever. Same thing with running right down when we're looking at this, this lines up, these are nice and close. Everything should work the way that it's supposed to without issue. But I know these are gonna come off. Well, I'm doing the other work, so I'm just gonna take these wheels off. So I am calling the, the collection and accurization and uh, you know whatever whatever no yeah they're just to prove that the just to prove it all is still there anyway this is all done this fits I'm calling this complete I don't want to waste a whole lot more time on it and yeah, I know half a wheel went off screen and onto my floor. Again, proving that I am human like every other modeler and parts just roll off and disappear into the sunset. I can find that later. So with that suspension shown and done, the other thing is going to be dealing with these flaps off of the back fenders. I will be dealing with that at a later stage. Even right now in building this kit, sometimes I would hesitate to put these on just because they get in the way and sometimes they might get snapped. I would, if you're just building this kit straight through, I would wait off on putting these on until you're ready to put the side skirts on. Say you've got, you're, you're getting ready to prime this and, and hide it. Otherwise, um, I'd wait even to a later stage to do it. Another part that I wanted to show real fast is this is the Tamiya sprocket right here. That does fit on there. You can put a poly cap in there. It does fit. And it does match up to the, the wheels. So like I said, you can just slap that on. You just you 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 don't want new sprockets. Or and this won't really work work, but I wanted to show that it it is correct. This is the more accurate uh, sprocket off of a main kit. And even with the main kit, it does fit. This goes on. Uh, this is always so hard. This goes on and it does match up. Now I'm not saying that the main kit sprocket will match up with the Tommy tr vinyl track and work I'm just saying you got this detail set and it does match up when this is built you could if you really wanted to take the Meng sprocket and put it on there and it would work I'm not thrilled with how this looks just yet I've got to double check everything on my references and I'm planning on making my own custom sprocket later on but at least it's in line and that's the important part so again, all that said, I'm gonna I'll deal with the other shocks on the other side and the other return rollers outside of this right now. I just want to get working on step four because we've we've now pushed through step three. I've addressed the um, flaps for this moment. Move the super glue out of the way before that gets in trouble. So you want to deal with the door first. I am going to have this shut. I don't even want to have a question about it. Don't want to worry about it. It goes on the back side of part B65. That's B64. And the pegs are sized, so it's pretty easy to get it on. Hard to make a mistake. But that's how that gets glued on. Pretty simple. Straightforward sandwiches on. Be careful of running over, running glue over, because um, it's a flat surface and it will run around wherever it wants to. Then you just take B63, which is the exterior part of the door, the part you're going to be seeing on the model. Again, 
large and small pegs, large and small holes. Just gets glued on like that. And there we go. Pretty simple. Now I'm not worried if I screw up the inside because again, I'm not gonna be showing it. I could even go without putting that piece on, but I like it on there because I don't want to have any fit issues because I decided to not put that interior piece in. Next up is the rear door itself. So parts B35 and parts B34, 435, like so. So I'm just gonna run my glue around some of the raised areas real quick like, just to uh, get this centered and done. Put a little extra glue where the peg hole is. There are no moving parts at this point, so you don't have to worry about keeping glue off of an area. The hardest part is that this is large enough to where the glue will, may end up drying up in one area before you get it all the way over on another. And so run that, put that on, and then what I can do is run down the seam with the liquid glue and that should give me enough ample uh, glue in there to secure everything and again you want to be careful you don't let the glue run through the edge get on your finger or make a big fingerprint or something like that but that's done now we come to Huh, maybe that was the part that wandered off. <laughs> okay, key piece of advice when you're modeling. I had the uh, hook assembly. It's just part B41, and that's the, the, the part on the back for hooking things on. I had that with these parts here. It looks like when one of the wheels came off, it fell down and knocked it right off the, the build area. So I will do the tow rope which is, it always feels to me to be a little anemic from Tamiya. I don't know if they just underdo it or whatever, but this is, this is our okay. It's not bad. I'm not going to worry about it. I think the, the, the tow cable ends look all right. The, you know, the mounts are okay. I'm, I'm going to glue it on. So it's this hole here, and this hole here. glue it on with that just to get the uh, parts in the hole first like so and then the important part to me is to get the glue underneath the latches and I, I think that especially for the time that Tommy did this kit they're actually really uh, fairly accurate you know they look good they're simplified sure but it means that it can be put together as one piece rather than several and you'll notice that there are a couple of uh, plastic hooks as well so just kind of work your way around without putting on too much glue mind you and uh, get that all in let the the glue start to solidify and then what I would do is in these areas where I've done the cuts it's really hard to clean them up and not take out any detail or flatten them out too much. So I always just run a little um, modeling glue, the, the liquid glue just in those areas. And what that does seem to do is get rid of a little bit of that parting seam. And also to smooth out where the parts have been attached to the sprues without Not too much work. It kind of it smooths it out and gets rid of the extra because it's it's the extra is much thinner than the regular part. So there I've done that. And finally, what they'll have you do over here at the end is to make the hinge. Now the real hinges on the real vehicle do not work like this, but this is Tommy's attempt at making a workable part on the kit that works 
mostly like the real thing. Mm, it's okay. Um, so it's just part A44 and A45, two of them, and they get wrapped around that. I prefer so that I can keep things from getting um, glued together. I prefer to put them together like so off of the part and I'll let them sit for a minute or two just so that they can start to the the glue itself is is drying and they start to get a little tacky or fairly tacky and then I can put them together or sorry I put them in I can pry them apart just a little bit so I can then place them on the door now the way that they're supposed to be set up is they're flat with the curves upwards going on like this. So they're they're set up with the with the hump up. I don't, I don't know the right terminology. So that eventually they'll look like this, or the way they'll be hooked up is like this. And that's important so that they have the clearance that's needed to set the door right. Because if you set it up like this, and that's not correct, then you're going to end up with the door too low or too high, depending on what the situation is. We haven't checked that out yet. So while that sits for just a minute, I'm going to look on the floor for my uh, pintle. Uh, I wish I had some fancy background music to play for you, but I don't. So I'll just sit and talk about how I hate looking for parts. <laughs> just like everybody else. And I don't know where my part went. But just like other human beings, you gotta keep looking and thinking about where the part might have gone. And eventually you either find it or you decide that the world has gained a new completely independent model part and you need to replace it with something else. Now, in regards to that particular model part, there was some debate in my mind over how accurate it was. It seemed a little bit too thin. Oh, here we go and a little bit too weak. And by that I mean the pintles on US Army vehicles tend to be, uh, I believe the word the kids use now is chonky. When you look at it and you feel and grab it, it feels like a big hunk of metal because it's a big hunk of metal. I looked this over, I looked over the details it's not perfect, but I think that it's it's decent. It's good enough to where I can just let it go. Now, I prefer to have it set up to where the piece that is the bigger and thicker portion right here, and this being the thinner, smaller, I like that on top because that's how I always remember the vehicles having the pintles uh, in the motor pool and such where it was always on top. Now, I don't know if it will always be on top. I also don't know if I care. Because <laughs> they did spin. That's about the best I can tell you. But the idea behind it is, is that the top, this big chunky part at the top is the hinged part, open and shut. The bottom part is what everything rests on. So I can't imagine you would want it upside down so that the mechanism that holds this together could possibly fail and then you lose your trailer. This way, if it fails, the pressure's all still on that uh, concave um, arm. So I'm going to just put some glue in here and glue that on that way. Now, this does not have to be straight up and down. Again, these things pivoted. Or at least the ones I worked on. I was not on Bradley's in particular. I was mainly on 113s and M88s, but... They pivoted so it's possible for it to be sideways in that but a lot of people like to have them straight because I think that 
makes it look like it's professionally built. A lot of people just don't know that that's always done. Now these are probably set up enough. Like I said, so I'm going to go in and kind of separate them out. You get that kind of weird little feel to them and then put it together like so. And so that's how they're having you build it in the instructions. So the eventually it ends up like that with that big hinge sitting on the outside-ish of the door. Is this accurate to the real thing? No. Is it how I'm still going to do it? Yes. The Bradley kit, while being what I would call the only uh, ODS kit, although the Academy kit is out there, but essentially it's it's the same thing. It's a solid replica. They do have their their own uh, way of doing the ODS version of it. They they did a. Uh, I'm just gonna come out and say it. They did a copy of Tommy's kit, and in doing that. I now know that all these parts that you see on here for the Tamiya kit will also work just as well on the Academy kit for accurizing it. Their ODS upgrade and update is not an exact copy of the Tamiya kit, so there are some changes, and while all these parts will still work, this build will not exactly match up with how they did their updates, if that makes sense. I don't want to spend a lot of time dealing with those two kits and ODS, even though they're the only real ODS kits to start with, because they are so out of date from when they came out. If I'm, I mean, this is already a lot of accurizing that, that's been done on here. If we just really get into it even more, we're going to get to the point to where it's almost going to be a completely new kit. And one other point while we're still looking at the underside here is that these front uh, areas, oh, sorry, these pintle mounts do not have the holes that they should have in them. And so I am going to deal with them by just putting a, a mark like so. And then I have a drill bit. Now it's not the easiest See, this is too big, too. But you got to come in from the side and basically drill out the hole. And it usually helps if you have a longer bit. So then you don't have to hit these or else clean, you know, do this before you mount it on there. But essentially this is doing the hole drilling. <laughs> now the neat thing that I like about this is that you know it's a Tamiya kit. This goes together really well even though we've talked about a few of the the changes and the updates that need to be done to, to make this more accurate. Honestly you could build this thing straight out of the box and you're still gonna have a fun build and it's still gonna be mostly accurate and if you paint it really well and nicely and have fun with it it's not going to matter if it's not accurate. It's still going to look the part. Yeah, you know, the return rollers aren't going to be accurate. Or the road wheels aren't going to be accurate. But you don't, at least I don't build these kits so that I have completely accurate road wheels. That's not my focus. In this particular case, I took it on as a kind of a burden because it decided. I decided that it was going to be important to me. You can see I'm drilling my way through, but this bit just isn't thrilled. I'm glad that I can show you guys that there are uh, a lot of challenges in upgrading and doing the, the stuff that needs to be done. I don't want this to be another cookie cutter. Hey, you know, this is so super simple. Just take this, just drill a hole in there. You know, what's so hard about drilling a hole? Well, there's some challenge in drilling a hole, apparently. Maybe your drill bit isn't sharp for the day. Maybe you didn't grab your best knife for pointing things out. Maybe your file is missing. 
Maybe you lose a part on the floor, you know? Maybe the day gets to be a little bit more of a challenge than you really want it to be, and it's really hard to take something that's supposed to be fun and relaxing and keep it fun and relaxing. Well, okay, I get it. Let's not get too bent out of shape and, and take a step back and see what we can do to enjoy ourselves. You know, lower the expectations for the day. to sit back and relax and see what can be done so there now I've I've changed my drill bit it's a little bit more accurate you'll notice that now I can come at it from a little bit further out so I can go on straight it's definitely biting through the plastic better whatever the reason I adjusted So one of the things about the Bradley vehicle that makes it interesting is that even though it was touted as being a family of vehicles, as in the basic chassis could be used to offer a lot of different things. Uh, one thing, what I'm thinking of is like there was supposed to be an ambulance version or a command and control version. And let's back it up a little bit. They made the MLRS off of the chassis, and that's accurate. Or, uh, that's that's kind of cool. Yeah, you can see that it's popping out on the side. Now you got to be careful because I'm putting a lot of pressure on it, not to mess anything up. But there you go. Hole drilled, and they did make a command and control version, but it's based off of the MLRS version rather than the straight Bradley version. What's cool is that they did end up making the M6 Beefist, which was the follow-on to the M981 Fist V, so you got a Beefist, and uh, the, or I'm sorry, the M6 Linebacker, which was the Stinger-equipped anti-aircraft version. And then the M7 B fist. Um, I thought I think it's kind of interesting that they were able to to make more out of the chassis. Not really that realized. I think the end of the Cold War really put the kibosh on a lot of cool things. But these vehicles served in Operation Desert Storm, which is where this is from. Obviously, they served in. The Iraq War, the Afghanistan War, and they're, they held up. They did their job, which is all that can really be asked of them. Were they perfect? No. Is anything perfect? No. Did they do their job of ferrying troops to the battlefield and providing fire support? Yeah, you know, they, they did what they were supposed to do. Are there better vehicles out there? I'm not sure that I'm going to say that the Striker is a better vehicle. I think it serves a different purpose. These things on pavement, not so awesome, in that they tend to rip it up. That's where the wheeled vehicles come in better. But, and you can see even though I pulled out, and that is a brand new drill bit, drilling through took a little bit of work so you gotta have a little bit of patience you take a wheeled vehicle going back to our my previous little comment there you take a wheeled vehicle and you go off-road with it unless those road areas are pretty good you're gonna start having a bad day fairly fast you take a tracked vehicle and put it on pavement and unless you've really got some nice rubber padded tracks and you're careful about how you're turning and stuff, you're going to start ripping up that pavement. Which, I mean, aside from, say, ticking off civilians or, or anything along those lines, it's also not going to be great because long term, then you're losing the capability of having that pavement there. And that's usually easier on vehicles. So now you guys can see this is where this is headed. Right here. These two great big lumps for the hinge and you have to put this on the, the way the door is going to sit and then glue it in and sometimes in the past i've seen people to where they've had gaps because the door sits a little more proud or it just is a little bit off you know oh you know there's a little bit of a gap there or something didn't 
just didn't line up somewhere or something like that getting this to work and that's the downfall of making this uh usable if you wanted it accurate i'm sure tommy could have made it accurate without that operability but then you wouldn't have an opening hatch and it wouldn't be as cool i guess anyhow that is that is step four all the parts are added and i will see you next time <laughs>